Where do you get these bonds? All right, well, you go over to the General Service Administration, and here are all the forms right here. And you can go through them, and you can search. And I'm looking for SF24. And you see it right here, bid bond. And you go SF25. You have to get these, you got to get these off of their website. You cannot. Here's the performance bond. You get it. You download it. And the reason why you have to get it off their website, because these bonds have expiration dates. You see how this one expires 831-225. All right, so you just can't pull one out your ass off the internet from anywhere. You have to go to the GSA website to get these forms. All right, if you're going to use these. All right, you have to go to the General Service Administration. Okay, so wanted to, you know, put that bug in your ear. All right, so he says, okay, what are they doing with these bonds? What's going on in the courtroom is that they are suing you for a debt collection. What it is is it's an action of a sum set. The word presume comes from the word a sum set, which means I agree or I presume to do. An act of a sum set, which means I agree to the collection of a debt. If you look at these bonds, every one of these bonds, the bid bond, performance bond, and payment bond, all have a penal sum attached to it. The reason for the penal sum is if you don't pay the debt, you go into default judgment. That is what is going on in the courtroom. This is why all these guys are sitting in prison wondering what is going on. If you go into there and argue jurisdiction, Jack Smith is exactly correct in what he is saying about honor and dishonor. If you go in and argue jurisdiction or refuse to answer questions that the judge or the court addresses to you, they will find you in contempt of court and they will put you in jail. And if you read clerk's practice, that's all they talk about is contempt. Now, let me pause right here. He's absolutely correct. When you read clerk's practice, but they don't use the word contempt, they use the word contumacy. Contumacy. Let's look up the word contumacy. All right, we're in class right now. People wanted to know why you come to SPC. This is when you re read clerk's praxis, they use different words. They don't use the word bond. All right, they use the word um, caution. Okay, so let's look, up, let's look at the word caution first. All right, so you have to understand how all these words are different from back then. But, it, but when you understand what you're doing, you can bring it up to the modern day. So these use the word caution. What is a caution and what is contumacy? I'm going to stop at caution first. Caution. Right here. Security given to ensure performance of some obligation. All right? The person who gives security, a cautioner, or it says, see, bail. Okay? That's what they call a caution. Okay, so now we're going to look up the word contumacy. All right, so right here, here is it right here, contumacious conduct. Contumacious conduct right here. A willful disobedience of the court. Contempt. Disorderly conduct. Behavior that tends to disturb the public peace, offend public morals, or undermine public safety. A common law, there was no offense known as disorderly conduct, although the offense of breaching the peace made by many public, disper dis uh, made many public disper uh, disturbances criminal. In addition, this offense, this is what they do, uh, what old girl got caught up over there in Dubai. We used to have that in the United States. An old girl went over there to Dubai, making a, acting a damn fool, thinking that she can do that, uh, that black feminist stuff in, that she does in the United States over in Dubai, and they arrested her ass, and, and she might end up doing some prison time just for cussing out a man over in Dubai. <laughs> you don't do that. In, you can't do in other countries what you do in the United States of America. All right? In addition, this offense could be based on behavior that might cause another to respond in a violent manner, even though the party guilty of the breach of the peace acted quietly or secretly, as when a person challenges someone to a duel. Okay? And, and, you, and you can see it right here. And, and then they got, what is it, contumacy? Let me see. That's contumacious conduct. But let me go down here to contumacy. Contumacy. All right? This is the word that they use in Admiralty. It says, contempt of court. The refusal of a person to follow a court order or direction. So, right, contumacious. You can see it right there. Contempt. All right. So when you read clerk's practice, they're not going to be saying the word contempt. They're going to be using this word right here. I'm using, and the reason I pause to show you this is an example of how when you read something in history, you got to bring the words up to modern day. The word, the, in ancient times, they used the word contumacy. That's contempt today. They're going to use the word contempt. 
So you're going to be able to see, you know what? I see that they're doing the same thing. This is the same shit they're doing today. That's what's going to trip you out. You're going to be like, man, they just doing the exact same thing. They just modernized everything. They just modernized everything. What he was just talking about, arguing jurisdiction, is that all they talk about is contempt. When they used to, uh, what they used to do back in Edward I, if you owe a debt, they would send a sheriff out with a warrant to arrest you. This is all civil. This is not criminal. It's just a smoke screen to cover up what they are doing with mercantile civil law and what they used to do when they arrest people with a warrant and brought the person into court and made them sign a bond and released until the civil suit commenced. It actually says civil suit in clerk's practices. It, de it definitely does. It tells you that it's called the civil jurisdiction of the admiralty. There are some transcripts made of some of my thoughts, and I'm going to write it on the board so that everyone knows how to spell. This is how you spell clerk's praxis, Latin for practice. If you look up praxis, it means practice. This is the only book I've ever seen, and I've seen about every Admiralty book in existence that's an actual praxis book, and it goes into everything that Jack teaches. It talks about letters of rogatory. It talks about the collection of the debt. What they do is arrest you, then they hold you. Basically, they hold you until the suit has been completed, and when they get default judgment on you because of your failure to pay the debt, they put you into prison. Anyone who has been in jail or prison that knows me knows that I'm not wrong. Attorneys are there to cover up the smoke screen. What attorneys do, what attorneys do, what attorneys do because no one knows what is going on, they lead you into dishonor or default judgment, and then the court puts you into prison. Then they sell your default judgment. Who do they sell it to? Believe it or not, the U.S. District Court buys all of these state court judgments. We were doing securitization audits. It's a screen that lets you see what's going on on the investments on Wall Street. And they have a whole section on there. They, they got all the court cases on Wall Street. That's what the court case, the case number that you get, is like a QCIP number. It's a security. It's a tracking number that they have. And I, I called up there and asked them, I said, why are y'all tracking all these court cases? And the guy up there told me, he said, we just tracking them. He didn't give me no explanation. I'm telling y'all what, listen, I'm not claiming I know everything. Take what, I, what I'm telling you and go investigate it for yourself. There is even a document floating around on the internet showing out all the case. It's about um, juvenile court showing out all of these case numbers are actually QCIP numbers. They're securities tracking for each individual case. This is all civil. They're making money on every case. And he's talking about you should have all this stuff off the DTC. He's saying, you know, he's talking about QCIP numbers, SIN numbers. Uh, major corporations are feeding off the prison system. How many of you have heard of RIDA, Real Estate Investment Trust? That was what corporate, uh, Correction Corporations of America was, but they converted it from a real estate investment trust as of late. Um, it goes on, it said, here what goes on. A contractor comes in or any corporation can come in, and what they do is tender a bid bond to the U.S. District Court, and they buy up these court judgments. And anytime you issue a bid bond, there has to be a reinsure. They even have a reinsurance treaty, international treaties. If you read the Constitution, treaties of the supreme law of the land. So they get a reinsurance company to come in and act as surety for the bid bond. Then they bring in a performance bond. All these bonds are bid, payment, and performance are surety bonds. And anytime you issue a bid bond, it has to have a surety. Where is the surety going? It is, what is the surety guaranteeing? That's what it should say. It's guaranteeing reinsuring the bid bond by issuing a performance bond. Uh, what, that's what these performance bonds are. Then they get in underwriter, and then they would be either an insurance broker or an investment banker. They come in and underwrite the performance bond, which is reinsuring the bid bond. Uh, what does the underwriter do with the payment bond? It's talking about underwriting right here. And it says right here, it says, you are funding the whole enchilada because you got into default judgment when you went into court. Before you can do anything, you have to know what is going on. He's talking about reading these codes. He said right here is what I'm looking for. In order to win in court, you have to redeem the bond. I went in and asked them for the bond and everyone disappeared. Nobody showed up. That happened to me. If you go in and ask them for the bid bond, watch how they lock up. What, what are you talking about? You, you, there are things, you have to do it in a slick way. There are things you can do to convince yourself that all this stuff is real. You have to go in and test it for yourself. And you're going to see it. Same thing that happened to me. I was like, man, I cannot believe they're doing this shit. And let me tell you something. There's something that they cannot lie, it, it's almost like um, they rather obfuscate than to answer your question. That's why they like try to uh, not, not, not answer your question, move on, over talk you, uh, do things. And that's how you have to, where, where you got to bring in the belligerent claimant. The belligerent claimant is this right here. Let me just read it for you. 
this is it right here. This is it right here. This is the case. This is actually a case. It says the privilege against self-incrimination is neither accorded to the passive resistant uh, nor to the person who is ignorant of his rights, nor to one who is indifferent thereto. It is a fighting clause. Its benefits can be retained only by sustained combat. It cannot be claimed by attorney or solicitor. It is valid only when insisted upon by a belligerent claimant in person. All right, McAllister versus Hinkle. And what I interpreted this when I was that you got to stand up for your rights. If you easily, if they can easily roll over you, that's what it talks about in the Bible. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. All right. You got to remain in honor. You got to do all this as a gentleman. You got to kill these people with intelligence. You cannot t kill them with stupidity and ignorance. You cannot come into the courtroom acting ignorant. Yeah, they can't outright lie about certain things, S1. There's something about it. They, they, they don't lie. They try to figure out ways. Like when you watch a news report, when I was just watching a news report about the CPN, they didn't never say the CPN was illegal. They'll say things like, and people think that they can use a CPN and get a new credit file. Or they're led to believe they can get a CPN and get a new, but they never deny that you can't. That's how they kind of do their word things. That's the, that's the word play that they use. Sovereign citizens actually believe that these statutes are some kind of bond of record, but they won't ever. I say, okay, well, if it's not, then sign this affidavit saying it's not. They won't do that. They ain't gonna, they ain't gonna do none of that. They're not signing an affidavit. You got the first, the next thing you got to learn is the game they playing. 